Hey everybody, welcome to Techmark Gaming. And in today's video, I'll be talking about my two years of owning the PlayStation 5 and how it's been holding up so far. I'll be covering my experiences with the hardware, accessory durability, the games I've played, the updated UI features, and the good and bad experiences I've had with the console so far. So if you're looking for a channel that discusses in-depth topics about the PlayStation 5, then you're in the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, comment below, and tell me what games you like to play. And if you can, go ahead and like this video so the YouTube algorithm can recommend this channel to more PlayStation gamers like yourself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. How I got my PlayStation 5. Getting the PlayStation 5 on launch day was exciting to me because I was a long time Xbox One user and moving over to the PlayStation ecosystem brought back a lot of childhood memories. Growing up with the PlayStation 2 and the PSP showed me that gaming could be fun and enjoyable through tough times in my life. Although I missed out on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 era of gaming, the PlayStation 5 was able to make up that experience for me. Being able to play older PlayStation 4 games like The Last of Us, Crash Bandicoot, God of War, and Astro's Playroom helped me enjoy playing single player games again. But unfortunately, many people around the world wasn't able to experience the PlayStation 5 until recently. During the release of the PlayStation 5, the world began to go through a shutdown phase, which caused a lot of chip shortages. But as time went on, Sony began to produce more consoles with different internal variations to help people access them, instead of being hit with those hefty prices from scalpers all over the internet. This made me more appreciative of owning the console and experiencing its new groundbreaking features. But now, from the recording of this video, Sony announced that the PlayStation 5 shortages are over, alongside with releasing a report stating that they've sold over 35 million units. So this gives me the perfect chance to tell you about my experience with the PlayStation 5 so far. The hardware I purchased. As you may know, Sony released two iterations of the PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 with a disk drive and the completely digital version without a disk drive. I was fortunate enough to pre-order the all digital version not being by choice, but because it was the only thing that was on the market. This is because the disk version sold out so quickly. While some may say I should have gotten the disk version, I have no problem with this because I've been an all digital gamer since the PSP and the Xbox days. I've always found joy with owning the game digitally and not carrying a backpack full of disk. Especially if I scratch the game, then the game won't be able to be read by the console. But over time, I know that this problem went away since the disc only serves as a license to the game for it to be downloaded online anyways. Along with the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition, I picked up the PlayStation 5 webcam for streaming purposes and chatting with friends, a secondary DualSense controller which definitely came in handy while I had some issues with the stock controller, but I'll get into that later on in the review. The PlayStation 5 Media Remote for streaming apps like Hulu, HBO, YouTube, and Peacock the 3D Pulse headset for a more consolidated audio experience while I'm gaming. And alongside those first party accessories, I decided to pick up a couple of third party accessories such as a one terabyte NVMe drive for additional storage, a seamless USB hub from Amazon which gives me more access to charge many of my devices like my iPhone or my iPad, a webcam cover for the Sony PlayStation 5 webcam which gives me pretty good privacy when I'm not streaming. I also purchased a charger station from Amazon that sits on the top of my PlayStation 5 seamlessly so I can charge my controllers after I'm done gaming. And lastly, some hooks to go on the side of my PlayStation 5's plates so it can hang up my headphones, my media remote, or external hard drive for extra storage. As far as the PlayStation 5 itself, the durability has been great. I have minor scratches and scuffs around the console. There is slight scratches near the USB port on the front of the PlayStation 5, but that problem is quickly solved with the USB hub I just mentioned. But as far as that, I have some accessories that I have some issues with that I think you guys should know about. First on the list, the stock DualSense controller that came with the PlayStation 5. This controller gave me issues within the first four months of ownership. I noticed that the front trackpad on the controller began to deteriorate, which led to an unpleasant sound while pressing it. And it's noticeable because it's the select button in most of the games that I play. I contacted the Sony support team and they had me send out the controller, which gave me the impression that they were going to fix it or either swap out the controller. But once I received it, I noticed that it was the same controller and I still had the same issue. But I figured that it was just a small issue and I can just get over it. But things got worse. Within the past few recent weeks, I noticed that the controller began to get stick drift which became more prevalent every time I played games like Call of Duty where my character would just randomly point up in the sky or just start moving out of place while I'm camping. <laughs> Yes guys, I'm a camper, don't judge. This issue occurred so frequently that I just stopped using the controller altogether. 
I tried to get back in touch with Sony, but apparently they said that they can't fix the controller due to it being out of warranty. So in the meantime, I just started to use my backup controller that I purchased before. And it's the all black dual sense that I ended up purchasing when they released it. And this controller has been my daily driver since. Now the second accessory that I started to have issues with is the 3D Pulse headset. Even though it sounds great, the 3D Pulse headset itself began to have some issues with the ear cuff. The leather material started to separate from the glue, which was a manufacturer defect. I purchased a protection plan from GameStop, which they were happy to replace that out for me with a newer headset. After about six months of using that headset, I ended up having the same issue and I just ignored it because I didn't have another protection plan and I wasn't about to shell out more money to buy a new headset. And then the unimaginable happened. One day while putting on the headset, the right earpiece just randomly broke off. This was the last straw, so I just stopped using the headset altogether. Me being an audio professional, I had some pretty great headphones laying around, which were the Blue Mix 5 headphones, which has a pre-built-in amplifier inside of the headset. This is very useful if you need that extra boost in volume while listening to music or working on an audio project for a client. The only setback to this is that it's not wireless, but being an audio professional, I know that there is many benefits to having a wired connection over a wireless connection. In addition to the great sound quality, Sony allows you to enable 3D audio on a non-PlayStation headset. So feature-wise, I really wasn't missing out. And I actually think I have the advantage over other players because I can hear their footsteps from a further distance because of the boost of amplitude settings that's inside of the Mix 5 headphones. These headphones run about $200 on Amazon and I'll leave a link down below if you want to check them out. But on the other hand, the rest of the accessories like the Media Remote has held up pretty good even though i dropped them off the sofa many times the buttons are still tactile just like from day one and i'll cover the features that i use the most later in this review the webcam has held up pretty well the quality is still crystal clear for streaming and chatting with other friends around the world and the hinge is still solid for different viewing angles and the rest of the third party accessories that i've purchased still holds up pretty well and i'll leave a link down in the comments below if you guys want to check those out too my ui experience since the launch of the PlayStation 5, I've always felt like Sony didn't have much time with tweaking the UI and perfecting it. There were many things missing from the features list, especially when you compare it to the PlayStation 4, such as themes and customizing tabs so I can view information that's most useful to me, like prioritizing friends that are online and controlling my audio experience directly from the quick menu. But as Sony began to release its updates, I noticed that the UI has become a lot more user friendly. For example, those cards that used to pop up when I pressed the PlayStation PlayStation button to go into the quick menu are now gone. Apparently they were used for tracking trophy progress and jumping into games a lot quicker, but every time I tried to use it, it didn't really work as intended. I see that Sony removed all of those features for a more streamlined user experience that now showcases new tips and tricks for each update that's released, your recently created game clips that you've captured, and news that's related to game releases. The home screen is a lot more sorted out, allowing you to easily see which games are PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4 titles. You can keep them on the same screen if you like to play those the most, which is nice to have. You are now able to see which friends are online and what games they're playing right there on the home screen. You can now hide certain notifications during gameplay, which is great for those who like to concentrate during competitive game sessions. For those who have a PlayStation 5, be sure to comment below and tell me what's your favorite feature within the last few updates. And I'll be sure to check those out and reply to your comment. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button on this channel if you like this video so far. Streaming apps. Before I get into the games category, I would like to talk about the streaming apps since there is a lot of people who use the PlayStation 5 to watch content as well. Since the launch of the PlayStation 5, developers began to release apps dedicated to the PlayStation 5's UI, and they have great integration with the home screen. Just to name a few apps that I downloaded is Hulu, YouTube, HBO Max, Peacock, Netflix, Apple Music, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV, and Twitch. These apps help me stay up to date with TV shows and movies. As you switch through apps, you can see that each app has a catalog integrated within your home screen, giving you the best suggested TV shows to get into, and this is great for people that just want to play something in the background or see the latest trending content. My favorite TV show to watch right now is The Last of Us. I played part one and part two before the TV show launched, 
And if you watch this show on HBO Max, what do you think about it? Is it a hit or miss? Drop your thoughts below in the comment section. Along with streaming apps, I will highly recommend getting a Bluetooth media remote since it's a great companion for the PlayStation 5. You have volume controls alongside with a mute button, a voice powered assistant built in within the controller to help you search for things quicker, a on and off button for your TV, navigation buttons like rewind, play, and fast forward, and a very useful section at the bottom of the remote where you can launch apps with the press of one button. And you can always launch the control center with the press of the PlayStation button at the bottom of the remote. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check out this remote as well. Games I've played. The games that I enjoy playing on the PlayStation 5 since launch has been a handful of games, some online and some offline, and each have their benefits. The first game, which comes in many series, is Call of Duty. All the way from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, alongside Vanguard and Cold War, all the way up to the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 game. I'm a big Call of Duty fan, and since I've upgraded to the PlayStation 5, I noticed dramatic differences in graphics coming from the last gen Xbox, especially being compared with my 4K 60Hz Samsung song smart tv this monitor has an enhanced game settings which gives you a bright and vibrant experience for the price and i'll leave a link down below so you guys can check it out the second game that i enjoy playing is nba 2k23 from running around in the park to playing my player the PlayStation 5 handles the open world experience with ease. I never experienced any lags or random crashes while doing graphic intensive tasks. I think I spent countless hours playing this game and I enjoy being in full control of a basketball game and being fully immersed. And when I want to sit down and have a casual game session, I sometimes play Fall Guys because it has a great online community of players that just want to have fun. The colors are vibrant and it always have new game modes and maps to keep you from getting bored of this game. I've also played the God of War series. I have yet to play the newer version which is God of War Ragnarok but I'm looking forward to playing this game this year because I'm impressed with the 2018 version and its impeccable storyline. And for racing, I've played a good amount of Dirt 5. This game is such a blast playing because it gives off an arcade vibe, especially with the PS5 DualSense controller vibrations and the haptic triggers, which fully immerses you into the game. I like that there's a lot of players ready to play online with you, and if you're not feeling super competitive, the storyline has some great maps that you can rip and shred through the mud on. Remote Play Using Remote Play on my iPhone, paired up with the official PS5 Backbone controller is delightful, and it brings back a lot of nostalgia from the PlayStation Portable days. I personally use my iPhone 13 Pro Max since it has a faster Wi-Fi chip to support my 5G router, which helps latency while I'm away from my console. I can't speak for everybody, but from my experience, it's great to play The Last of Us or NBA 2K23 my player while in bed. I've also completed the first chapter of The Last of Us fully using Remote Play, and at a point, I kind of forgot that I was streaming from my console. I haven't tested out Remote Play outside of my home since I work from home, but this does give me a question to ask. Why haven't Sony been been able to release an official updated handheld for the mobile market. I know that people say that the Vita failed, but I beg to differ. With so many YouTube channels covering the PSP and the Vita's powerful hardware, I know Sony still have a chance in the game, but we'll have to wait and see what they have up their sleeves. Until then, I'll be using Remote Play with the official Backbone controller. And if you guys would like to see an in-depth review of me using Remote Play with the Backbone controller, be sure to leave a comment down below telling me that you guys want to see it. So overall, the PlayStation 5 has been a great console for getting the job done, especially when I want to chat or play with friends from halfway across the world. Some things that I would like to see from Sony is more next gen games so we can get a full version of what the PS5 is capable of. I will also like to see for them to release an external disk drive for us digital owners who couldn't get their hands on a disk version when pre-orders were announced. And one thing with the media remote that I would love to see is for them to add a feature where the remote locks so I don't accidentally click the button if I lay on the remote. This happens pretty frequently, but it's not a big deal, but it would help. But beyond that, if you're thinking about getting a PlayStation 5 or if if you already have one, I say that you made the right choice. With the features that come with the PlayStation 5, it can serve as a gaming hub or a media hub for you and the family. If you've enjoyed this review, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below your favorite PS5 feature. In the meantime, I'll see you guys later. Techmark Gaming, checking out. Deuces.